for two. He didn't realize it. He threw it, and Tyler and uh, Houghton was already getting off the hash. Sure. So that was his great disguise, and that's what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to make a pitcher look a lot different for the quarterback. Tommy, you, you said DeVito's going to play, and he's the guy that can hurt you with his legs. So how do you keep him in the pocket? You confuse him. Justin, your thoughts? They're good because they have good players, quite frankly. I, and obviously a great defensive mind in Joe Rossi. We're in the uh, basically the last game where Joe Rossi was not the defensive coordinator was here in Champaign. Illinois defense or Illinois offense ran all over the Gophers that day. It was one of the worst defensive performances ever. Rob Smith gets fired. Joe Rossi comes in. He's a great coordinator, but we just mentioned some of the players. Tyler Newbin has developed into an all Big Ten type safety. Justin Wally came in highly touted. He is not disappointed. Terrell Smith has had an up and down career had some injuries but now he's paying off on the promise that we all saw four or five years ago so I think that's why you're seeing it they're, they're a good secondary they're a good defense they've got good players they're well coached it's a good scheme and they're making plays and, and I actually think there there are more plays to be made they dropped a couple of interceptions against Purdue a few weeks ago that might have even tipped the scales a little yeah. bit more to the Gopher side so defense is playing great yeah staying with the theme of defense the Gopher run defense is currently ranked sixth in the nation and they're gonna have to be at their best today because they've got a challenge ahead of them with Tommy DeVito not at 100% Illinois could possibly lead on running back Chase Brown even more than they already have this season Brown has been a bright spot for the offense for Illinois averaging nearly six yards a carry he's 121 yards shy of hitting that thousand yard mark already we'll get to keys to the game later in the show but guys this feels like a focal point of the matchup if Minnesota can stop the run Justin it could be a long day for Illinois yeah, it may be easier said than done. It, what's interesting, we've talked about how these guys are mirror images out here. You know, Mo Ibrahim and Chase Brown are basically you know, competing for who can have a longer streak of 100-yard games. Il Minnesota, number one in time of possession in the country. Illinois, number eight. They both want to keep the ball. They both want to shrink the game. They both want long, sustained drives. And Chase Brown, it, it, what's just so good about him, we mentioned the broken tackles last segment. That's how he rolls. Like, the first guy rarely brings him down. And then when he gets out, he gets loose. And I'm sure we're seeing it now. He can house it. That's probably the one difference between Mo and him. So if Mo gets outside, he's probably not going to run by anybody and take it 80 yards. Chase Brown can do that. So that's why he's so dangerous. He's hard to bring down. And he's hard to catch and hard to stop if he gets outside. Yeah, he's certainly talented. Yeah, and you saw that there in those plays. Justin hit it head on. Like when he gets out in space, he's fast. He's dynamic. They use him in numerous ways. But that offensive line, too, let's not, let's not, not, not give them any credit. They are doing a great job in that zone run scheme. They're doing a great job in the cross blocks. Wisconsin's defense was caught off guard, but Iowa's defense tried to do what they could do. But the kid is, I mean, you see here, the kid is dynamic. He's a difference maker, and that's what you got to do. You're going to have to have multiple hats hitting him. You cannot get this guy with one guy. You got to corral him. You got to make sure you got him in space, and then when it's time to tackle, wrap him up and get him to the ground. Guys, with a win today, Minnesota can't get back to first place, but after losing to Purdue, after losing to Purdue last week, this game suddenly carries a little extra weight. You know, Justin accused me of stealing his thunder earlier. He stole mine a little bit earlier because uh, I, you can't far too fall behind in the standings. I'm well aware that P.J. Fleck and his team do a great job of focusing on one game at a time, but considering where these two teams are at right now, Justin, I'm going to start with you because you touched on it a moment ago. You know, how big is this game? feels like a pivotal matchup here at this point of the season. Yeah, when we were in Indianapolis for Big Ten Media Day, I can't say that I had Minnesota and Illinois October, what is it, 14th, as maybe the biggest game in the West. Um, it is for both of these teams. I think a team can win the West at 6-3 and three this year. If you're just talking about Big Ten record. But it can't be Minnesota, given how they just lost to Purdue. And they need Purdue to you know, kind of lose a couple of games now, even if the Gophers win out. So it's a massive game. Illinois has got Michigan on the schedule a little bit later. We know what the Gophers have next weekend at Penn State. This is one of those that you know, Illinois has a, a tough loss to Indiana, which they're probably kicking themselves for, just like the Gophers are kicking themselves for Purdue. So margin for error now is very, very small if you want to stay a contender in the Big Ten West. So it is a massive, massive game. Obviously, you want to win every single game. You want to, you go out and play, but if you, they lose this game, they're a game and a half back in the West. Yeah, they got to win this game, and it's, it's there for the taking, and this is why. Purdue still has to play Wisconsin, Iowa, and Illinois, and you cannot overlook. Even though we know Iowa's not good right now, Iowa's still a tough team, and like I said, they still have to play Iowa, Illinois, and Wisconsin. So those are three games that can help Minnesota out. I know Minnesota fans don't like cheering for Wisconsin, but this might be a time to hope Wisconsin can knock Purdue yep. down a peg. If Minnesota beats Illinois, they're right there. If one more loss by Purdue, 
and Minnesota continues to win out, that solidifies it. But today, like PJ said, it's the 0-0 zero and zero Illinois championship season. They have to win today. If they don't win today, it's probably slim to none because Illinois is going to run through the rest of their competition, I feel like. Justin, uh, we will see you a bit later in the show. Enjoy the playlist. We'll see you in a few minutes. Everybody, stick around. I'm going to start dancing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to start dancing. We'll I can't see wait to see it. Make sure Goody gets it on camera. All right, Ron and I are going to be back on the other side of the break to break down some of the key plays in Minnesota's last game and where they can make adjustments. That's next. Welcome back to the Gopher pregame show. Live look out at Champaign, Illinois, at University of Illinois Memorial Stadium as we get you ready for kickoff between Minnesota and Illinois. Welcome back, everybody, to the Gopher pregame show. Time now to break down a few plays from what we saw a couple of weeks ago against Purdue. Ron Johnson with me. And, Ron, uh, we're going to key in at a moment here in the second quarter. Gophers down 10 nothing, but... This connection between Tanner Morgan and Daniel Jackson, you like this. Why? Yeah, and so what, you, what you're going to see in this check with me, this is the guy. He is reading him in the RPO. You'll see him check with his coach. This guy kind of walks, and then he comes back. This matchup is what he's keeping his eye on. If they're playing man, this becomes his guy. That's why I like what Tanner's doing here. He checks with me. You see him. Zero's going to walk. Now that's his guy. When he RPOs it, zero bites. He knows now I'm throwing it to the out because he cannot get underneath me. That's top Tanner. When Tanner's playing that way, nobody can stop Tanner in this country. He is a good quarterback. The check with me is working with Kurt Shiraka. I like that call there. But I call this good Tanner, bad Tanner. What you're going to see here is him not recognizing the defense. And so when you see the defense, same thing, you're going to see the count. So you got one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys are within that area. This guy, take him out. But you got seven here. They're playing a seven man, but then these guys, look at that depth. Yeah. This space here is yeah. showing that they're going to back out of it. So the deep ball is not there. He has to find a way to get out of this. He doesn't notice that everybody's backed up. There's definitely two safeties over the top. That's not the throw. That's just bad Tanner, not reading it, not understanding. Uh, trying too much down like you said down 20 to 10 trying to force the issue 
at that point, and that fan feels the same way I Here's feel. Here's another angle of you it. You see his eyes? Yeah. He floated it. Like, I think he thought Daniel, or uh, Michael Brown Stevens, yep. he could have, like, fit it in there a little tighter. But that's not the throw. The throw, if you're going to make that and you're going to take a chance, is down to Dalen Wright. Dalen Wright is there in cover two. He's one to one man oh man if you look at that safety he's going to stay over the top of Michael Brown Stevens and then you try to hold throw it over the top to Dalen Wright there was some good action though especially on defense last week or you're yep. going to see it right here and so this is the guy that makes the play but what he does he does a good job disguising Aiden O'Connell is reading one two three four five six he only sees six Tyler Newbin's going to make it look like he's coming back and then he's going to jump it. He's just reading Aiden O'Connell's eyes. You see him getting out like he's in cover three, but now he's, he's slow playing it, and he just reads it. What a great play. That's just a slow play read. He knows. Now, he took a chance because that backside receiver, he didn't threaten his deep, four, uh, deep quarters. They were in some kind of quarters coverage, and he played the robber. You see it. Jordan Howden saw it, and Tyler Newman nowhere. made the play. Out of and nowhere. And so that's picture, just yeah. two safeties being on the same page. Terrell Smith was a little bit behind, but he knew he could trust his guy. And that's just a good quarters back off coverage. The guy is there. If Tyler Newman doesn't make that play, it's a catch. And he's probably within field goal range at that point. They tried to do what they can do. It wasn't enough. Like we mentioned, the Gopher defense has forced at least three turnovers in back-to-back -back games. We'll see if they can do that again against Illinois. Coming up next, when we come back, we'll sit down with the man in the middle of the offensive line. John Michael Schmitz is our guest. Coming up next on the Gopher pregame show. watching the Gopher pregame show. Rolling right along here on the Gopher pregame show. Special guest joining us now with a man in the middle up front on the offensive line, John Michael Schmitz. John Michael, we appreciate you taking the time. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Big game coming up today against Illinois. You guys uh, had the loss against Purdue, but when you look ahead to Illinois and now that they're ranked and it's a Big Ten West opponent, how big is this game? I mean, we always talk about going 1-0 in the uh, 
Illinois championship uh, season. I think it's uh, just can't have the circumstance dictate our behavior, no matter if they're ranked or not ranked. Um, to us, it's just a game, another game on the schedule, and we just gotta uh, prepare it as like it's a we're going one and zero against Illinois. You guys play very, very well in your one and only road contest of the season against Michigan State. You're back on the road against Illinois. How does the mentality change, if at all, when you play a road game, especially against a divisional opponent? Yeah, I mean, we just look like it as uh, we don't let the circumstance dictate our behavior. So no matter if we're playing at home or we're playing at, uh, away with our home fans or uh, or away fans and we're getting booed at, or it doesn't, doesn't matter. We're usually... Uh, locked in uh, on the field and uh, focusing on our uh, teammates and knowing what's going on in the, in the game. Is there a different routine at all when you're on the road? I know obviously you got to travel. So what's like yeah. a routine like on the road as opposed to playing at home? Uh, just, I mean, usually you're going to a hotel right away if you're at home. But uh, at away games, you got to get on a plane. Then you go to a bus over to the hotel. And then you uh, do some meetings here and there, and then you just get ready for a game. So, yeah. P.J. Fleck mentioned that, you know, right after the game against Purdue, you guys were ready to play the next day. I mean, what was it like, uh, you know, suffering a f- the, your first loss of the season? What was the conversation like between the players and saying, hey, you know, this is our opportunity to bounce back now? Yeah, I mean, just going back and watching the film, uh, knowing what uh, we were so close at uh, uh, the execution of things, we need to execute a little uh, bit better, and we knew, we know that. Um, just uh, just reviewing the film and looking at the things we got to get better at, and it was just uh, eager to know how much uh, we left on the table. And uh, yeah, when you look at the film, what do you feel like you need to get better at? Um, just as a whole, we, I mean, uh, just as a whole, I would say we just got to do a better job executing eleven playing as one. It's just uh, one guy here and there uh, not doing their job. And uh, as an offense, everyone has to do their job to make the play work. And um, it has an effect on things. Well, you didn't have Mo Ibrahim for the game against Purdue. You have a, a lot of guys that are very talented in that backfield. But how much of a difference is he going to make being back in the lineup with Illinois? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just Mo. Mo, Mo. Mo brings that energy. <laughs> and uh, he just has a, that effect on uh, the game. I mean, he's a... He's one of the best backs in the country. Excited to get him back for this game and uh, just the energy he brings and uh, his mentality. I know you're focused on this season, but for yourself personally, I mean, there's a broader picture for you when your football career at the University of Minnesota ends. What is up next for John Michael Schmidt? Um, Currently just focused on uh, just looking to get better each and every day uh, with this team. And um, that's that's, that's where my focus is on right now. That's all I'm going to say. We're, we're, we're not going to dive into some of those NFL scouts who have highly touted you at all? No, no. no I think we're just going to focus right here on the season. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited about this uh, second half and uh, what this uh, Gopher team uh, has in store. Speaking of the second half, you know, again, there's so much football left to be played, but the door is wide open, especially in the Big Ten West, for just anybody. For It's, it's really a division that's up for grabs. What do you guys need to make sure you need to do in order to be that team that stands atop of it at the end of the season? I mean, we learned a lot about ourselves in the bye week and what we need to get better at. Just talking about, uh, as an execution uh, standpoint of things, our little details and uh, just how we play the game and how how, uh, how the game of football is fun and it's supposed to be fun. And uh, and if we take that fun factor out, it's just uh, it's just a tough game and uh, no one likes that. So I mean, I, I think it's just as. Uh, uh, to think about an execution, our details, and just how we play, I would say. And our thanks to John Michael Schmitz. Uh, you called him the best center in college football when we were talking about it just a moment ago, and some of the numbers back of your point, doesn't it? Yeah, and there's a thing about PFF. It's not, it's not the end-all, be-all, sure, because there are fair. certain things that they don't take into account, sure. but he has the highest grade at a 91.8 in the run game, 91.2. The next closest guy is Brett Nealon from uh, USC at an 81.3. Pass blocking, now that's the difference. He's in 80.8. 
and then Brett Nealon out of USC is at 89. And so that's the big difference. But I think Mo Ibrahim makes him better. He bought that up. Mo is a yep. difference maker. Mo makes him better in the run game. He's one of the best centers in college football. In the pass game, he has to get better. The check with me is a little tough because in the pros, the center is helping the quarterback decide who the mic is and making the changes. On their offense right now for college, it's up to the coach yeah. and Tanner Morgan. So he's out of it a little bit, so he doesn't get to say, I would like this matchup with me and this guy the best. So I think in the NFL, he'll get better at pass blocking because he'll have a better decision. He'll have more input with the quarterback to say, hey, no, 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 I want this guy. I can't get this guy. He's too yeah. far over. He's out of my gap, I, you know, my eye line. I can't get him. We're going to switch the mic. Mike's 52. Boom, I'm blocking the guy that's touching my nose, uh, which is just a football term for meaning I can I can touch him. It's Football has some, some of the dumbest terms ever, <laughs> but I love him. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he wants the guy that's touching his nose. And so right. pass blocking, like I said, He's not the best, but he's the best run blocking center. And then overall, when you do the math, he's the best center in college football statistically. But when you watch the film, he's good. It's interesting that you bring that up because part of that conversation that I had with him that you didn't see in that interview, I even asked him, I said, which one do you like better, run blocking or pass blocking? And I, I told him, I said, I hear offensive linemen typically prefer to run block. He said, yeah, I prefer to run block for sure. And he know it sounded like he knows that that's where he needs to get better as his pass protection. But in the run game, he his eyes just lit up when I brought up the run game. Yeah, at the, at the Vikings uh, alumni weekend, I got a chance to talk to Randall McDaniel in the tunnel, and he said the same thing. We were just talking about offensive line for the Vikings. He's like, man, we'd love to go forward. We don't want to go backwards. Sure. Like, yeah. going backwards is not like what we want to do. Let us go forward. Let us roll gray. Let us eat the defense alignment up. So then the passing becomes easy because now they're a little bit nervous. They don't know if runs pass coming so I, I think Mo's going to get this game going Justin bought it up I think you bought it up do yep. they pass first to open up the run I, I think you got to just put your foot on their throat early and run the ball down their throat but John Michael Schmidt it starts with him if he is not playing up to the top they're going to struggle but he's always on his game from day one to day 101. Well, we will see what's in store for the Gopher offensive line and Mo Ibrahim a little later in, t in the game, or later today when the game kicks off at 11 o'clock. When we return on the Gopher pregame show, we'll take a look around the Big Ten. We'll discuss some of the big games happening today. That's coming up next.
Welcome back to the Gopher pregame show. Live look at the University of Illinois Memorial Stadium as we get you ready for kickoff here between Minnesota and Illinois. A brisk start to the morning out in Illinois. Temperature is currently in the low 40s. Welcome back to the Gopher pregame show. Time now to take a look around the Big Ten this weekend. Plenty of big matchups on the docket. Let's start at the big house. Number 10, Penn State at number five, Michigan. Both teams are undefeated. Not exactly sure how I feel about either of these teams. I have to be honest, considering some of the competition that they played at this point. But, Ron, how do you see things playing out in Ann Arbor this afternoon? Well, John Harbaugh finally, is, uh, or Jim Harbaugh, has finally found his quarterback. When you think about his quarterback and then also Ronnie Bell, and then he has one of the best running backs in college football as well. It's Blake Corum right there, as you see. So Michigan is going to want to ground and pound. Penn State, on the other hand, they're a little bit more, not say, uh, spectacular, but they like to right there. They like to go to the air. They like to rely on the quarterback's arm. And so when you think about this matchup, it's going to be who makes the least amount of mistakes. Michigan runs a lot of play action. They run a lot of deep passes. There's one there with them on the move. Michigan, I think, is the better team, though. There you have it. Michigan over Penn State, according to the one and only Ron Johnson. <laughs> Let's move over to another big matchup taking place today. The winner of this game will hang on to at least a share of the Big Ten West lead. Nebraska on the road doing battle with Purdue. Credit Nebraska and Mickey Joseph. I think a lot of us left them for dead yeah. after they fired Scott Frost, but the Cornhuskers have won two straight conference games. We saw what Purdue did a couple of weeks ago when they were here. Are we giving Nebraska a chance here, Ron? I am a little bit, and this is why Mickey Joseph has got, has got these guys playing well. Like, it's surprising. Yeah. And you're right. Like, it's like a Michael Myers. Every time we think they're dead, they're back again <laughs> 50 years <laughs> later with Jamie Lee Curtis. So, I think Nebraska has just enough shot. But Purdue, Aiden O'Connell has been playing well. This is going to be a game, again, of can Aiden O'Connell get through this game and dominate? If Purdue's offense comes out early and dominates, I don't think Wisconsin or uh, Nebraska has enough offensive firepower. Okay. But if it's a close game, that's what Nebraska wants to keep it to. All right, Nebraska, who would have thought? My goodness. Interesting matchup here. 3-3 three and three Indiana hosting 4-2 and two Maryland. The Terps have a pretty good team. They pushed Michigan to the edge a few weeks ago. It was a back-and-forth fourth quarter last week when they eventually lost by two to Purdue. Indiana, meanwhile, just fired its run game coordinator and offensive line coach Darren Hiller. Uh, what are we looking for in this match? Well, this is an interesting game. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be quarterback play, and that's the key. The run game coordinator, I think that's a scapegoat. When you're not, when your offense isn't playing well, it's not just the run game. It's the offensive line. It's the scheme. The, maybe the, the offense is not keeping the defense off the field long enough, too. Rick Spielman always would say that, like, hey, well, every time we blame the offense, what is the defense doing? Are they are they helping? Are they getting them out of there on third down? Are they on the field too long? And so it's it's a it's a team-to-team -team thing. But, you know, when you look at Talia Tagovailoa, this is his team. He is going to go right here. You can see you know, extra time in the pocket, finding the wide open guy. He's not just going to run. He can run, but he's not just going to run anymore. He's looking to make the big play. Yeah, no doubt about it. Finally, a matchup of two teams with, let's be honest, very frustrated fan bases. Wisconsin traveling to take on Michigan State. The Spartans are reeling right now, having lost four straight after their 2-0 start. Wisconsin, meanwhile, we know about the firing of Paul Chris. This Badger team is 3-3, three three, which is where I'm sure they weren't envisioning themselves at the beginning of the season. Something has to give up here, Ron. And, Ron, uh, I, I, you kind of touched on it earlier in the show. I know you're never rooting for Wisconsin, but today might be that day. Yeah, you know what? It wouldn't hurt for them to beat Michigan State, but at the end of the day, go green, go white. I, I want to see Wisconsin take the biggest L possible. Leah Bino, I know she's excited to see Michigan State get back on track because there's another coach that's on the hot seat. Mel Tucker, if he doesn't win this game and he goes 0-4, who knows what's going to happen to him? I mean, he keeps saying, I'm coming. He hasn't come yet. So, at some point, he has to get it going for this team. Last year, they were graced with right. a great running yeah. back. Now they don't have the number one running back in the Big Ten or one of the run best running backs in the Big Ten, and they just can't find another weapon. Like, they have one weapon at receiver. They have a couple other. Mosley's a good receiver, but it, they have not put together a complete game yet. Again, 0-3 right now in the Big Ten. That is not good. Yeah, it's not, and you can see that game a little later this afternoon right here on Fox 9. Well, normally we save our keys to the game until the very end of the show, but Justin Gard needs to run and get to his radio duty, so we want to get to his key before we let you go. JG, your key to the game today. Well, not only do I have to run, guys, I have to run up all those bleachers behind I me to get up to that. the press box. So 
if this is it for me, it's been a good run. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. I love working with you guys, everybody back there. Speaking of running, that is my key, is run the ball efficiently today. I mentioned it earlier in the show, 47 yards rushing against Purdue. Lowest total for a Gopher team since 2015. Long time ago, they have to be able to just manufacture enough yards. I don't expect Mo to have one of those 200-yard games, but can you do what Dalvin Cook did last week against the Bears? Get that four-yard run, that five-yard run, that six-yard run. So all of a sudden, here's the RPO. Here's the deep shot. It all starts with the running game. It'll be great to have Mo back. You don't have to go crazy on the ground. Just run efficiently enough to make it a threat. Keep this Illinois defense off balance. Well, Justin, I am looking at those stairs behind you, and I got to tell you, uh, we wish you the very best of luck getting up there. Uh, make sure you get it up there because we can't do the show without you. So I'm sorry to say. Uh, JG, I'm, I'm yeah. glad that you. you're not swag surfing yeah. right now. Like, you are really letting me down. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, Ron. I'll see you back there on Tuesday. Hopefully. Can't Hopefully. We can't wait. Justin, thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next week on the Go for Pregame Show. And we're not done here on the Go for Pregame Show. When we come back, we'll give you our keys to victory. You heard Justin's, myself and Ron. We've got ours on the other side of the break. watching the Gopher pregame show. Winding things down here on the Gopher pregame show. It is time now to get to our keys to victory. I know we got to Justin's a little bit earlier, but you know, we, we give him a pass. He's got to run up those steps. Uh, let's get right to it. Uh, Ron, uh, your key to victory today for Minnesota as they take on Illinois. Well, for all the people watching Cobra Kai, yes, strike hard, yes, strike first, strike hard, strike fast. You know, that's that's the key. They have to strike first and they have to strike hard. You have to go out there and make a play early. Be the first team to do a trick play, do a hitch and go. We saw Tanner Morgan with the check with me. Normally the check with me, you're reading the outside linebacker and it's a simple out pass and you're just trying to out leverage. Go for the out and up. Do like a post with the outside guy, out and up with the inside guy, knowing his man coverage. It's going to be a big play. Hopefully. I know Matt Simon is not watching this, but hopefully Coach Sharaka or Matt Simon, somebody can get them this message. Run that play. Run the post with the outside guy. Inside guy, run the out and up. They're never going to see it because they're going to try to jump the out route. That's the play. Strike hard, strike first. We 
can never have enough uh, Cobra Kai references on this show, and we will probably have one, at least one, from here on out to the end of the season. My key to victory, meanwhile, I alluded to this a little bit earlier, Chase Brown playing a big role in Illinois' success, and that's why it's so imperative for the Gophers to stop the run. Tommy DeVito, like we said, not at 100%. He is making the start, but you have to make life difficult for him, and in order to do that, taking away the run is going to make DeVito's life awfully awfully difficult Tommy DeVito injured in that game last week against Iowa so uh, naturally you would think you would want him to be forced to make the plays take away his best friend and Chase Brown you know running the football so stopping the run for me is critical for this uh, for this Minnesota team if they want to win today's matchup now before we get to the matchup meter I want to tell you to download the Fox bet super six app for your chance at winning twenty five thousand dollars Fox bet super six is a free to play contest where you pick the winners and margins of victory of six marquee matchups if you get all six right in the college football contest you have a shot at winning the twenty five thousand dollar jackpot open the app make your picks before Saturday's games all kick off and you have a chance of walking away with some big time money. Okay, time now to get to our matchup meter. Ron, what is the result of the matchup meter today? Between so I had to remember because yeah. I always change it. Like everything <laughs> changes weekly. Like, you know, DeVito's in and out. Yeah. So that's why I had to go back to the notes I sent you to make sure we're on the same page. Hey, you're busy. You're busy at home. So I, I, I think offensively, I'm going to go Gophers for the simple fact of Mo Ibram is back. I hope he is back. I, I hope. That, you know, because I know college football doesn't have injury reports, so I hope he is back. So I'm going to go and go for his offense for the simple fact of I like Mo Ibram in this passing game. I think Illinois has a really good run game with Chase Brown, but I think their passing game is not there. Defensively, though, I'm going to go Illinois. They, they've only given up eight points a game. Like Justin said, they have not allowed a touchdown at home. That's so right. hopefully the Gophers can be the first to do it in their building and get a touchdown on the board. Hopefully first touchdown of the day early, and then they can be there. Coaching, I got to give it to Brett Bielow. This is why. He's doing more with less. He doesn't have the talent I think P.J. has. You look at John Michael Schmidt, one of the best in, in the Big Ten and in the country. You look at Quinn Carroll, who has now earned himself to become one of the best in the Big Ten as well. You look at Mo Ibram. You look at Daniel Jackson. Now the other receivers, yeah, but Brevin span, span forward, really good. Tanner Morgan, good. So I think Brett Bielema is doing more with less. From the X-Factor standpoint, though, I got to go back to Mo. Mo Ibram is the X factor of the day, so I give it to the Gophers. Mo Ibram is a difference maker. He can grind the clock out. He can slow the game down. But like Justin said, he makes people miss. He, they miss tackles. Now, an open field, he's not as fast as Chase Brown, but he is definitely a difference maker. And that's why I have to give the X factor to the Gophers and Mo Ibram today. You know, a few weeks ago, we were talking about the significance of losing Chris Ottman Bell. And that, you know, certainly affects a lot of what this offense wants to do. Wide receiver wise, we touched on it a little bit earlier in the show with Daniel Jackson. An opportunity for him, I would think, Ron, you know, to continue to build on what we've seen through these last couple of games. Yeah, and, and Daniel Jackson, to me, again, we talked about who was going to be the next up after Chris Altman Bell. Daniel Jackson is, he's not spl splashy. He's not like a, a top end speed guy, but what he is, he's consistent. He's always there to make a play. Terry Morgan seems comfortable with him now. In the RPO game, he seems like the guy he's going to. He seems like the slot guy they're using, like Rashad Bateman a few years ago, where it's the re he's reading that guy. If the linebacker comes when he puts it in the running back's stomach he's going to pull it and throw the out route if he sticks it in there the linebacker uh, drops early he's going to hand it off and give it to Mo that's why it's an extended kind of long boom pull it throw it and so Daniel Jackson has been there understands the offense doesn't take plays off and that's why I like him and also I forgot the last part of it no mercy like if you're up in this game no mercy strike first strike hard no mercy you do not need to take your foot off the pedal you have to really come back and show I can run the ball down here. You play Madden with little kids. I always did. If you're playing Madden with an eight-year-old, I hate when people take it easy. Put the foot on their throat. Show them that just because you beat your little eight-year-old friends, you can't beat me. Like, I will never let my kids beat me at anything. I don't care. And they are girls, and they are going to learn early and often. I beat them in races. I beat them in, 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 in uh, bike rides, whatever it is. No mercy. Make and them earn it. That's what they have to do. Yeah, make them earn it. And make that's what they got to do today. The Gophers have to make Illinois earn every inch of that blade of grass, and they have to make sure they don't show any mercy. Just go out there, have fun, do it within the whistles legally. Yeah. But do have no mercy. I do want to talk about Cobra Kai, and we will uh, just in just a minute. But before we do that, we still need to talk a little bit of football. Tanner Morgan, when we were on the PJ Flex show earlier this week, something that PJ said that kind of stood out to me. Uh, you know, the, the stats, when you look at the box score, obviously the numbers weren't good. 
But PJ was quick to point out that he didn't really think it was a poor performance on Tanner Morgan's part. There were some drops, obviously a lot of drops in that game. You know, when Tanner, you know, the co-offensive Big Ten player of the week after the Michigan State game, you're at the top of the mountain one week, and then you're at the bottom of the next week. What does Tanner need to do in order to kind of get back on track here today? Yeah, so I, I think the one thing, too, is the receivers, and PJ's alluding to this, and he's never going to throw anybody under the bus, but middle of the field open, middle of the field closed. What that means is the safeties are here, it's open. If they're like this, it's closed. Cover mm -hmm. three, and one guys in the box when that happens the routes change up the seams I think honestly I think that interception that Tanner Morgan threw he was expecting his receiver to bend over the middle a little bit yep. because middle of the field it was a cover to look now I don't know what happened after the snap because I haven't really looked at that whole full play but I think that's where some PJ say like Tanner was doing what he thought was going to happen and some of the receivers weren't paying attention to the change because they might show you middle of the field close and then all of a sudden boom they're in cover two and and Michael Brown Stevens got to run the seam and then boom nope I gotta take it to the middle and that's what I think Tanner was thinking when he kind of threw it to the middle. But Tanner Morgan, what he has to do to bounce back in response is, one, pre-snap versus post-snap, how quick. And P.J. said it's going to be that. It's not one second. You, it's quick. you got to figure it out quick where the safeties went and then where I'm going with the ball. That's why quarterbacks get paid so much. That's why Tom Brady is getting paid so much. That's why Peyton, Peyton Manning, that's why Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson wants $250 million. And he might It get is it. the hardest job in the, on the team because you have so much you have to figure out pre-snap and post-snap, and that's what Tanner Morgan. Today, post-snap, he has to see what Illinois is doing because they're not going to show it to him early. Real quick before we go, besides the P.J. Flex show, is Cobra Kai the most compelling TV <laughs> show on television right now? Ooh, I, I'd say it's one of the ones up there. Yeah. A lot of people in Minnesota probably are watching this, but I love Raising Canaan, 50 Cent show. Okay. Uh, you know, it's, it's the spinoff of, yeah. of, of when he, him and the guys on Power. And I was Raising Canaan. I like all those with Tommy and all the, like, showing the characters as kids. That, to me, is compelling because I grew up in that BMF in Detroit, like, with those guys. Sure. But, yeah, Cobra Kai is definitely, it's, it's cheesy, but it's fun. Strike first, strike hard, no mercy. We'll see you next week.